over the age of 35, stop everything you're doing right now. After a lifetime of eating fatty foods, you may run the risks of a stroke or heart attack due to plaque buildup in your veins and arteries. To learn how you can reduce your risks, visit youthfountainlab.com or call 1-800-853-7856 today. This may be a life-changing call for you or someone you love. Thank you, and we hope to hear from you. The other thing happened to you. Our people don't know. You know what I mean? Some people was good for TV, and some people was, you know, music. And when we got ready to depart, he kind of explained that to me, that I was there for music. You know, forget all the antics and everything. He he was basically saying, like, I'm only doing this shit to, sell, to help you sell records, to help y'all sell records. We got to sell records when these cameras leave. These cameras ain't going to always be around. It's free promotion. Woo, 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 woo. So he was explaining that to me because of my attitude toward everything they had us doing. And he was like, yo, you got to stop snapping so much. He finally had him like, yo, come here. Mm -hmm. And broke it down to me about what the whole TV thing was about. And he was like, yo, this shit got to sell records. I need you to stay out of trouble, man. I, I'm, I'm, I'm going to have you. You're going to be a solo artist. I need you to keep Babs and Ness out of trouble. That's going to be my Bonnie and Clyde of the East Coast. He was like, I don't care if Sarah go back to Detroit and her husband pimp her all kind of, God forgive me. That's my group member, but this is the nigga word. And he's like, I don't give a fuck about no chopper. I don't care nothing about no. You think I give a fuck about Dylon? He's like, man, he's like, man, this shit, he was like, when this shit all said and done, you three got to sell records. Mm. Y'all still going to be bad, boy. Woo, 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 woo. And just hearing, like, the way he, you know, he was talking about people that I love, I'm like, Yo, yeah. this nigga, wow, man, I can't be fucking with this nigga. So he got to understand, I come from, I come from loyalty. Mm -hmm. I come from, you know, the streets where loyalty is important. I'm not like them other people. I'm not, you can't purchase me. I'm not, your money don't fascinate me. These, I don't even hang in clubs. I'm the nigga that's in the parking lot with a stick. Way before I met this guy, this yeah. is who I always been. I always been the shooter. I always been the one in the parking lot waiting on my niggas to come out to make sure they say, I never wanted to party. So some people was excited about this, but this to me was bringing light to a face of, of shit. I had done, done a lot of dirt. When I went back home, I was terrified because it's like people can see me now and I can't mm -hmm. see them. They can see me coming. All they got to do is, hey, Freddie P, let me get a CD and they can shoot me or something. Mm -hmm. I had done this shit. So it was like, I was terrified. I didn't ask everybody when I went back home, I was vest up everywhere I go. I wore a vest mm -hmm. down to my sleep down there because that's how I was living. So I was never appreciative of the fame and all that. I just wanted to, to be successful making music. I just wanted people to know that I had talent making music, bro. That's it. How was the contract breakdown? Obviously, you guys, you joined the band. You know what I mean? You come into the crib. You guys are starting to create your first album, which we had. And we that shit was dope. And when we start listening to it to this day, it probably brings back some nostalgia. But talk about the business side of it. How was the contract structure? And did you guys have any real say from the negotiation we have no say. standpoint on yeah. it was a you take it or leave it because it was more of a situation imagine going to the 12th grade and you done did all the hard work to get to the 12th grade now you gonna say you quit yeah you can't quit now you done did all the hard work you done did all the sucker shit you done went through all the pain and that's how it was with the contracts it's like oh if y'all don't want to take it y'all can leave with a damn if you do damn if you don't we're not negotiating they'll knock certain shit off they'll you know negotiate little shit you know what i'm saying but anything major changes, they was not giving up anything. They was not. It was. It was like y'all don't want it. Go home. You heard the nigga. He said it. He came downstairs. Y'all don't want to walk. Get the stepping. Don't do it right here. Don't talk about it. Be about it. I walked off. When that shit was over, that man walked down the street with his with his crew. And I was coming back as he walked off. I was coming back because he hadn't talked that shit about. If y'all don't want to walk for the cheesecake, get the fuck from around. Like he was talking his shit. Mm -hmm. Damn, I hate when that shit happened, dog. All right, we can hear you now. Y'all can hear me? Yes, sir. So I walked off. And um, he came down the street. And he was like, I respect that. And kept walking. You get what I'm saying? Because everybody else was down there pleading and, and know with all that. I'm like, bro, you told me that like, it is what it is. Shit, nigga, I don't got to be here. I can go back to selling dope. My thing was, let me know what it's going to be so I can go back 
Even when I, I swear to God, when I got my first check, I got, I ain't get dropped off home. I got dropped off in the trap. My <laughs> niggas told me, yo, what the fuck is you doing? You on TV. Man, fuck that. Watch that back door. Burger King, that's what we used to call the police when they was in the area. So I'm like, watch that back door. Woo, 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 woo. I'm back to running the trap. As soon as I got up, I'm sitting on, I got a got $11,000, $12,000 check check in my pocket. And I'm sitting on the LTD calling shots. I ain't even had them went home yet. Because wow. it's what I knew and what I was used to. You get what I'm saying? I'm like, this little money ain't finna do shit to me. I'm finna put this shit up. We finna keep going. Woo, 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 woo. My niggas is like, yo, what the fuck is you doing? Huh. I'm like, nigga, I'm doing what I know. Mm. So, you know, his thing with me is he couldn't hurt me. He, could, he wanted to, but he couldn't hurt me. So even when he returned back, when, when, when me and him fell out and he returned to Miami, I knew his plan. He was going to get, you know, somebody he went to Cali. You know, they got Cali all them deals. Cali opened the doors for Miami artists because these niggas been trying to rap. These niggas been putting up posters. I was in the studio with the Rick Rosses. These niggas been had all their little campaign going. It used to be like a bunch of Miami independent labels running around battling each other, but it wasn't no universes, wasn't no Atlanta, wasn't nobody coming to get no deals out. It wasn't no nigga. The only thing they was respecting us for was Trick Daddy. I mean, not Trick Daddy, but Luke Music. Booty shit ain't, ain't like, you know what I mean? Music yeah. niggas can dance too. You know what yeah. I'm saying? Only thing had done broke through was Trick Daddy with You Don't Know Nam and Thug Holiday. Mm, when I went to New York, we was bamboos. You know what I'm saying? They was not taking no Florida niggas serious and no rap. But when niggas learned very fast that Florida niggas was different once I got on that camera. He's like, who this young nigga is? This nigga, this nigga serious. He's a real nigga. You know, like, you know, like, we all know real niggas when we step in the room. You know who the steppers is. They can't fake it. Mm -hmm. nah. So what it was a thing yeah. where, you know, he had a different respect for me than he had for my group. Actually, right. Now, if you heard a part of the question um, before we got off, right? how much did you guys make? Did you make $11,000 per show? Or Fuck was no. It? No? How much man, you make? Them niggas was robbing us. That's why I don't like none hey. of them niggas, man. If I ever see one of them niggas in real life, I'm slapping the fuck out of any, any one of them bad boy niggas that ain't did it. Because, listen, you got to understand, I learned a lot of shit after I left. Stevie J, all them niggas, man. Them cold pussy, man. I don't fuck with none of them niggas like that. You know what I'm saying? Them niggas marks, bro. I would have never did that shit they did to us, bro. You get what, what I'm happened? saying? These niggas was making more money off. These niggas, these niggas were booking, not Stevie J per se. But all them niggas, niggas was making more money. Niggas was doing, telling us we had promo shows and they was getting paid from it. Mm. You get what I'm saying? They got us flying around the city. They getting paid off of telling us we got promo and they getting paid from it. Mm. And they was booking shows for like 70, 80 bands, breaking down 20 bands with six people and shit, keeping the rest. It was just a lot of, and they did that shit more than once. So niggas was just raping us all around the corner. We had the money. The fame was there. We, now, the one thing they couldn't take away was the fame because we had the number one show three seasons in a row. Number mm -hmm. two at one. We were behind the Osborne. We was at, uh, when we had the fight, I think they told us we did 16.3 million viewers or something like that. So we had the number one show like worldwide. At, not, not, not worldwide, but I'm saying worldwide on MTV. Like right. We had the number one show on MTV for a while. And you, everybody know, man, when you renew a season, you get more money. And every time he renewed the season, he got more and more and more money. So I didn't start. My hate for Diddy came when Sarah called one day. We was going to do a reunion. This was like uh, maybe like six, seven years. I don't remember. Don't, don't quote me on that. Mm -hmm. But a couple years ago, and she said, yo, she sent the contracts in the group chat of what how much he made. This nigga made over $43 million on the second season alone. I was like, well, what the, the fuck? fuck out of here? That shit made me hate that nigga. From that day on, I wanted that nigga. I wanted to get, I'm like, yo, because I'm not scared of you, bro. And you been, I'm like, and my thing with him, bro, stop acting brand. I don't want him. He be all that. Don't act brand new with me. You know I was never, I never was scared of you, bro. I never played with you. I never joked with you. I never tried to be your friend. Your fame never fascinated me. And that's the thing with him is he's so used to people that want to be around him. I never wanted to be around you. I never wanted to be your friend. I was a Jay-Z fan. Nigga, I had more respect for fucking, uh, fucking just blaze and kanye before i had more respect for you because this is what i listened to young guru and i ain't never seen him a day in my life you get what i'm saying so i was never uh i was a tupac fanatic you gotta understand tupac started me rapping well dear mama is the reason i even rap when i learned that you could bring life to a beat 
I ain't learned from Biggie. God for breast the dead, even though Biggie the one that gave me my chance because Biggie the one that, you know, that pumped the label that pushed me. Mm -hmm. right. But I learned from Tupac everything, my morals in life, everything. Like Tupac was like my father. You get what I'm saying? And he taught me how to rap. So I was never fascinated with Puffy. I'm from Miami. I'm a street nigga. I don't think this shit gonna last. There's some TV shit that I never even heard of. I never grasped the concept of making the band because I never knew what it was to like the second season. Wow. So yeah, I never got what he was trying mm -hmm. to do. I didn't know he was trying to make a whole group. I didn't know. I was just battling mm -hmm. competition. Like, bring him on. I'm gonna knock him out the way. Like, it's, <laughs> it's neat. Nobody's gonna do what I'm doing. And at that time, my energy was different. Like, mm -hmm. my energy, I was, nigga, I was the best performer you can ever fucking see in your life, nigga. I'm kicking the shoes off on stage, nigga. I'm I'm, I'm him. But nah, I wouldn't do that shit no more. I ain't no monkey. I ain't dancing around for nobody no more. But I'm just saying, oh. at that time, that's where I was. I wanted to be the best. I wanted to be respected. I wanted to be remembered. Right. Now, if you can, you said he made $43 million. That's what you observed on the, um, the group text. How much did you get? personally that year if you can remember man i could tell you this much that nigga never bust five hundred thousand down with the whole group and it's six of us mm. and so that don't make you hate a nigga if you got 43 yeah and you see a nigga's sons and all this shit still spending that money mm. i my thing what do you okay you got paid off the first season second season third season we, are, we, we got likeness now. Compensate us. You get what I'm saying? You're not doing this by yourself. People actually tuning in for us now. You barely was making appearances, my nigga. You get what I'm saying? Why does the nigga with, the, with no talent got the most money is my thing. You, I'm interview. Um, Why the man with no talent got the most money? All these dudes from back in the days, all they did was stand on people back. But I, I look at brothers doing it now. You got, even with Khaled's situation, Khaled, why you, why you so rich? You ain't you can't bust a bar, a lyric, no nothing. All you do is get a comp make compilations, bro. But you rich because they shaking the right hands, and they, you know, niggas get wet when Diddy walk in the room. I ain't shit ain't never fascinate me like that. Mm. We we often hear, especially him, we talked about it yesterday because Mace came out with the Oracle too. Obviously, that was going toward Diddy. And we talked about it throughout this the years of this show. Why does it seem like his name out of all is villainized? As being one of them dudes that just take, 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 take terrible business. Why does it seem like Diddy's name is the one? It's facts. All? The facts. You mm. got to look at it. Even Kanye made motherfucking Big Sean a millionaire. Yeah. Even Kanye made John Legend a millionaire. Jay-Z lowest accomplishment is worth $65 million. And that's J. Cole. He's a god. Talk about it. Yeah. You got Rihanna, who's a billionaire. Kanye, who's a billionaire. Like, Thanks. why you don't have one millionaire under your belt? Not one. Mm -hmm. You get what I'm saying? It's the facts, bro. You don't deal with 40, 50 artists, man. And, and you and you the only one that made money. You the only one. You the only one that's still surviving. Jay-Z got... A list of people up on there. Even fucking Beanie Siegel made money. Dane made money. Big the whole camp made money. PD Crack, all them boys made money. Mm -hmm. Diddy the only one, bro, because he don't have no talent. His talent is robbing people. His talent wow. is picking out the best star. I can tell you now, he he from Mount Vernon, so he can hear some shit that say, "Damn, you went through that." Boy, put that shit on track. Sell it to the people because of his face. And, you know, he the gatekeeper. Back then, everybody wanted to be down with Diddy. So if you seen with Diddy, you was, some, you, was, you was the next to blow. All you had to do was walk on stage with Diddy, and you was the next to blow. That was like a method for blowing up back in the days because, you know, we didn't have many outlets back then. You know what I'm saying? So Puff Daddy was a lot of people outlet. He was our god in music. You get what I'm saying? So... He ate off that. He ate off having resources. He ate off being the one that can walk you through the dope. You don't have no talent, though. Why are you richer than the talent? Because you robbed the talent. Why your son got Mace motherfucking uh, publishing? This Whoa. shit don't make no fucking sense. Why your mama got our publishing? Mm. This shit don't make no sense. Why my son ain't got it? Mm. You get what I'm saying? Like, it's just evident, like, he's the only one that practiced bad business, and that's why that nigga can't touch a bill. 
because he he can't touch a billion because it's gonna be hard to get the next hundred million. The world don't need you no more. You know what I'm saying? What I mean is, people used to need him to be seen with him. Now he's the parasite. 